suppose this night's thraldom was easier than Roybin's own. At the sight of him, Roybin's heart leaped with an impossible hope. Could the exchange be done with? Was it possible he would be sent home at last? Nephemail, the queen said. Has Salarial tired of you so quickly? He snorted. She sends me as a messenger. But the message is of little consequence. I rather think she doesn't like me. But you seem better pleased with the trade. I could not stand to part with my new knight, McNevin said, and Roybin bowed his head. Will you do what Nephemail suggests? Roybin took a deep breath, struggling for a calm he didn't feel. Every time he spoke, he was half afraid he would snap and say what he really thought. I doubt his plan's efficacy. Let me take the Hobbs place. I will not spill your wine, lady. Her smile widened with delight. She turned to Nephemail. He asks so prettily, doesn't he? Nephemail nodded, although he looked less amused than she had. His yellow eyes seemed to take Roybin's measure for the first time. And no concern for dignity. You must find that refreshing. She laughed at that, a laugh that seemed startled from her throat and as cold as ice breaking over a deep lake. Somewhere in the vast, dim cavern, a harp began to play. Roybin shuddered to think what it might be strung with. Be my table, then, Roybin. See to it that you do not tremble. The hob will suffer for any failing on your part. Roybin took the place of the little fairy easily, barely counting it as a humiliation to get down on his hands and knees, to bow his head and let the silver plates and warm dishes be set gingerly on his back. He did not flinch. He remained still, even as Nephemail seated himself on the floor beside the throne, resting yet another goblet on the curve of his spine. The man's hand rested on his ass, and Roybin bit his lip to avoid flinching in surprise. The stench of iron was overwhelming. He wondered how Nick Nevin could bear it. I've grown bored, Nephemail said. Although the Seely Court is lovely, certainly. And there is nothing to amuse you there? I find that hard to believe. There are things. Roybin thought he could feel the smile in those words. The hand slid across the hollow of his back. He stiffened before he could help himself and heard the goblets tinkle together with his movement. But my delight is in finding weakness. McNevin didn't so much as reprimand Roybin. He doubted it was out of any generosity on her part. Somehow, she said, I wonder if you are speaking to me at all. It is you I am speaking to, Nephemail said, but not you I am speaking about. Your weaknesses are not for me to know. A charming, ingratiating answer. But take your knight here, Roybin. I know his vulnerability. Do you? I would think that would be rather obvious. His love of the solitary fay has him on his knees even now. Roybin steeled himself not to move. That the queen of filth spoke about him as though he were an animal didn't surprise him, but he found that he was more afraid of what Nephemail might say. There was something hungry in the way that Nephemail spoke, a hunger Roybin wasn't sure what might sate. He loves Salarial. He declared himself to her, and the quest she gave him was this, to be your servant in exchange for peace. The queen of the unseelie court said nothing. He felt a goblet lifted from his back and then replaced. It is delightfully cruel, really. Here he is being loyal and brave for a woman who used him poorly. She never loved him. She's forgotten him already. That's not true, Roybin said, turning, so that silver dishes crashed around him.